I manage life of the machinist and I'm blowing up on Capital Chaos TV. You are number 666. How did you first get into music? Um, as being in a band, I uh, remember seeing OTEP and thinking, wow, I can't believe a woman sounds like that. And I kind of put me in the direction that I wanted to start playing music. I was 14 and I joined my first band ever and just kind of progressed on from there. What is the music and art scene uh, like there in uh, your uh, your area at the moment? And do you have a, a sense of New York pride? Um, I definitely am prideful of being from New York. The scene here is great. Being that it's New York City where we live, uh, we get every tour comes through to New York, either at big venues or small venues, big tours or small tours. Uh, we get to see everything that passes by. And, you know, we have, like, you know, our really good death metal scene. We have a good hardcore scene. Everyone kind of knows everybody. We all go to the same shows when we were younger, and we all just kind of suck around. And we're it's, it's definitely a very tight scene. I'm definitely very proud to be from New York and to be – in a band that's from such an awesome city. What are some of the uh, underground venues at the moment that, uh, uh, you know, somebody that would be visiting that area that you would recommend that they check out to experience the scene that you're a part of? I guess it would depend on what, uh, like, show would be passing through. But um, St. Vitus Bar in Brooklyn is always an awesome place. They have great sound. Awesome bands have played there. We've actually played there twice. A really dope venue, like so, super metal, really, really awesome. Um, then there's the Kingsland, which is the newer venue. Um, a lot of the smaller tours come through to there, but everyone always comes out whenever there's a show at the Kingsland, which is also located in Brooklyn, New York. Um, and then, you know, if you want to just like go have a really good time and check out some awesome metal memorabilia, you can hit up Dust Bar, which is in Brooklyn as well. It's a really awesome place. Super cool people. A lot of people involved in the metal scene all like hang out there and it's really awesome and welcoming. And uh, you have a, a new record coming out. Is it Confidus in Morte? Is that the correct pronunciation? Uh, it's Confidismos in Morte. Oh, cool. And it's Latin for In Death We Trust. Is that right? Yes, correct. It's been suggested that the album is controversial. Uh, how so? I guess that some of the things that I wrote about lyrically might be triggering to some people, but I feel it was really important for us to kind of be really dark with this album since our first EP was more like fun and like, you know, we were just having fun with that at that time. While we're still having fun now, it was really important that we talk about serious issues involving like, you know, women's rights, Black Lives Matter, politics, religion, everything that I feel needs to be spoken about, uh, regardless if it's negative or not. And so that's kind of the, the way we went about writing the album. Everyone was in a dark place. We all kind of came together, and it's just very dark. <laughs> and is that uh, a little bit of the OTEP influence? Uh, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. That was more of just like... My, I'd like, just we. I think the band itself, we influenced each other with this, the whole theme of the album. So, how hard is it to be controversial in 2019? Well, I wouldn't really say that we're controversial. We're just, we're just speaking what's on our minds, um, and um, I, I really think that everyone's going to be super supportive, and a lot of people will be able to relate to the album. So I don't think that it's a negative thing or it's going to be hard for us or anything. I feel like it's going to be an eye opener for some people and maybe make, you know, some other people feel like they can relate to us and our experiences in this world that has a lot of tragic events happening. Is it possible to be forgiven uh, for uh, white supremacy and sexism statements of the past? In other words, can people be forgiven for that or are they forever painted with that dark brush? Um, I think personally that when it's something as messed up as white supremacy and, you know, or maybe somebody who was uh, a sexual predator or, you know, anything like that, that 
if you're if you state that that is something that you are into or you believe in or you've done, I think that you know there's no really like changing that. Maybe a person can change it, but I don't know if you can like forgive somebody for being um, horrible like that. I guess people do make mistakes, but you know there's a difference between a mistake and having a belief such as like white power or something horrible like that. If that makes any sense. Yeah, it totally does. And uh, you are on top your. How did you hook up with Prosthetic Records? Um, so our my band's manager Wesley was shopping us out to a couple labels. You know how they do, and um, a couple were interested, but we went with Prosthetic because they just it seemed like they were really going to put us in the right direction. And I was really shocked when I found out we were going to be signing to them because I was like, wow, there's so many amazing, talented bands that are currently on or have been on that label. And it's just, it's really so awesome and makes me really happy and nervous at the same time that this is what's going on. But it's, it's cool. It just, it just happened. It was a two year bus shopping out to labels and then boom, aesthetic wanted to work with us. And it was like right on. <laughs> what are some of your current faves that are, uh, currently active on Posthetic? Um, well, we just did a tour with uh, Cognitive and Monotheist, and Monotheist are actually on Prosthetic. They're amazing uh, technical death metal band from Florida, from Orlando, and they're one of my top favorites. And then, of course, Venom Prison, uh, amazing, amazing death metal band. They just released a new album, and it's absolutely insane. Uh, doing really well with both of those bands so and uh, the album comes out 2012 what are your tour plans for the rest of the year which there's plenty of it left uh, <laughs> um well we're doing a the release tour in april uh we'll be gone from the 12th until about the 26th we're gonna be on tour with phil and aluka and it's gonna be really fun and then after that we have some other tours that are just like in question right now. Nothing's been uh, nothing definite yet, though. So we'll see what happens. But hopefully, a lot more touring this year because we definitely love being on the road. We love playing music and playing shows and stuff. So, what song is the first single off the new album? Uh, the first single that came out was No Peace. We just released it. It's a super powerful song. How uh, how, how hard is it to choose? How how hard is it to nail down that particular song or a or a single in general? Um, well, for this, we had the album done, and it was just one of the songs that we thought would make us stand out. And it sounds completely different from anything we've ever done before in the past. So, uh, I guess the hard part of it was that I was worried about like what the reaction would be from our fans because it doesn't sound like old machinist, but everything's been really great. So super positive reactions. A lot of people are really into the sound and can't wait for the album. So that makes it feel really good. So I guess the hard part of the single is over. <laughs> and obviously you do uh, the first single, No Peace. Uh, there's a, a pretty gory video that came out with that as well, right? Yes, it was. Uh, that definitely, some people were not too stoked on it and weren't expecting such a gory video, but um, yeah, definitely, definitely gory. But since there's not really much in the way of uh, television airplay to really worry about, there's, uh, there's no point really pulling back this most videos now just get aired on the internet, right? So you don't have to worry about getting banned from MTV. You, you're not going to get on MTV anyway, right? I mean, who knows? But uh, with that video, I'm sure that they wouldn't they wouldn't want to play that on TRL or anything. So. How do you like the uh, the new economy of likes, follows, and streams? For us, it's been pretty uh, been pretty crazy. Uh, a lot of people are noticing us and seeing everything go seeing everything go up is, is super overwhelming but it makes me feel good because I feel like all of the hard work and dedication I've been putting into music and my bandmates as well is finally starting to pay off so it's really awesome to see you know people streaming our single and streaming the old EP and checking out the video and stuff it's really really great it makes us feel really good and we we really love all the support we're getting do you have any uh, 
three uh, things that you'd like to uh, say to anybody that might be listening to this. Anyone that's listening, if you support us, thank you so much for always believing in us and allowing us to get as far as we've come. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll just keep doing awesome things in the future and you guys will always be there to support and you know, check us out. And yeah, and thank you to you for this awesome opportunity, this interview, my first interview ever. <laughs> so this oh, wow. is awesome. Yeah. Sure. <laughs>